The most important story in America right now is President Trump's health. And what's weird about that is we don't really know much about it at all. Despite President Trump's tweet that he was feeling better than he did 20 years ago, serious questions remain about the actual state of his health. People have the right to demand to know more. This is information that the public has a claim to. What does a scan of his lungs show? When did he last test negative for the virus? We've not had a real medical report from this president, unlike previous presidents. This is the first president we have not had a full medical report a, a really transparent disclosure. This is not a partisan issue. Everybody should have accurate information about the president's health. I think it's scary for our country. I think this is like a very unprecedented moment where we really don't know what's going on. This really shows you where we're at right now. People are begging for more information about Trump's body. And part of the reason the secrecy makes everyone nervous is because we all know that if Trump's lungs were clear, he would never shut up about it. He'd be telling us he has the best lungs ever. They passed all their tests. They're identifying rhinos left and right. Now, on the surface, it might seem like hiding his health problems from the American people is yet another example of Trump breaking the norms of the presidency. You know, like not releasing his tax returns or eating the Thanksgiving turkey instead of pardoning it. But it turns out there's a long history of American presidents keeping health secrets from the public. And it's the subject of another installment of our ongoing segment, if you don't know, now you know. Being president is a weird job. Because in a democracy, the president is the leader of the country, but they're also an employee. So do presidents have the right to keep their health problems to themselves? Well, throughout history, presidents have answered yes. Eisenhower was the first president to actually open up medical records, but when a bad event happened, they went into a kind of cover-up mode. September of 1955, he was in Colorado and had a massive, I mean massive, heart attack. And instead, his personal doctor told the press it was indigestion. After Ronald Reagan was shot in 1981, the White House released a photo showing him standing with Nancy Reagan cropping out a nurse holding a machine connected to a chest tube and never revealing how close he came to dying. Kennedy flatly denied his Addison's disease, a hormonal deficiency that can cause fatigue, low blood pressure, and weight loss. But he had it. While in office, he at times took as many as eight medications a day just to function, including painkillers, stimulants, antibiotics, steroids, hormones. The man was essentially a walking pharmacy. FDR was never transparent about his health, never. He tried to hide that he used a wheelchair for years and largely got away with it. If Secret Service agents saw a photographer taking a picture of Roosevelt, say, getting out of his car, they would seize the camera and tear out the film. Damn, FDR's people really went all out to make sure people didn't see him in a wheelchair, which kind of makes you wonder what they told people was actually going on. Isn't it weird that we've never seen the president stand up or walk? Yeah, he's lazy as shit, okay? No more questions, let's move on. I mean, look, at least back then, you could tear out someone's film in their camera. In 2020, the moment someone points a camera at you, you're already a meme. It's like, give me that phone. Give me that phone. Give me that phone. Give me that, give me, give me, give me, give me that, give me that, give me that phone. But yes, throughout American history, administrations did whatever it took to keep secrets about the president's health from lying about FDR's wheelchair by confiscating cameras to lying about Bill Clinton's asthma by hiding his inhaler in a saxophone. In fact, hiding health conditions goes all the way back to Lincoln. I mean, why do you think he was wearing that top hat? Dude had a conjoined twin under there, guys. That's, that's real, right? I saw that on Facebook. In fact, the only American president who didn't get away with it was President Taft. Man, they spilled all the tea on that guy. Poor dude got stuck in a bathtub once, and we're still talking about it a hundred years later. And then there's Grover Cleveland, 22nd president and world's most adorable Grover. Yeah, I said it, Grover, you mutant smurf. When it came to keeping secrets, President Cleveland took it to a whole new level. It's hard to imagine an American president dropping out of sight for nearly a week. 
But that's exactly what happened in 1893 when Grover Cleveland underwent secret cancer surgery. Back in 1893, Grover Cleveland actually had a cancerous tumor in the roof of his mouth. He didn't want anybody to know, so they snuck him onto a yacht. He had a friend who owned a yacht, so the cover story would be, oh, I'm just going on a fishing trip. And while they were on that boat, the operation took place. Six doctors were recruited. They were all sworn to secrecy. And in about 90 minutes, they removed most of his upper left palate, uh, five teeth, and a good part of his uh, upper left jaw as well. They managed to keep the uh, press at bay. They kept them at a distance from his home on Cape Cod until the wound was healed well enough. It took about three weeks. And then he was fitted with a prosthetic device that he could pop up uh, into his upper left jaw. But by and large, the secret held for 24 years. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Nobody heard from the president for three weeks? What a dream. But goddamn, that's a major cover-up. Grover Cleveland basically invented that move that celebrities do when they get secret butt implants. Oh yeah, I've just been away traveling for a couple weeks. Oh my butt. Yeah, I guess it did get twice as big. You know how vacations are. And if you ask me, it's hard to imagine a riskier situation for a president. Surgery on a boat in 1893? And don't forget, they had dragons back then. President Cleveland was a sitting duck out there. I saw that on Facebook. That's a real thing, right? Honestly, I don't even know why Cleveland went through all this trouble. If I were a president with a fake jaw, I would own that shit, baby. I would use it to intimidate other foreign leaders. Oh, what's that, China? You're gonna put sanctions on us? Well, check this out. <laughs> and look, maybe it's not a big problem if a president hides some dental work or a mild pill addiction. I mean, as long as they can still do the job, what's the difference? But there was also one case of a president who got so sick that he couldn't do the job and they still didn't tell the American people. Woodrow Wilson had a stroke that not even his closest advisors knew about. His last year and a half, almost a year and a half in office, he was incapacitated. His wife tried to conceal how bad it was. It turns out he was partially blind. He was partially paralyzed. He was lying upstairs in a bed in the White House, growing a beard, and they pretended that it was not that bad. His wife and his doctor told the cabinet and told the vice president, he's okay, we got this. You just can't see him. He's in seclusion upstairs and we'll pass down his decisions. They told the public their leader was suffering from exhaustion. Many say Edith Wilson effectively ran the country during that time. Holy shit. You guys act like this is some fun little quirk of American history, but y'all had a straight up coup. And also a secret woman president. Guys. That's huge. Why don't people talk about this more? Who run the world? Girls. But only behind the scenes while getting none of the credit? Girls. So yes, America has a proud history of its presidents misleading the public about their health. So from now on, when you hear Trump or his doctors withholding medical information, don't stress. Because in a way, this might actually be the most presidential thing Donald Trump has ever done. And if you don't know, now you know.